A hot air balloon is rising upwards with a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. When the balloon is 60 meters above the ground, a ball is released from it and the ball falls freely up to the ground. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Uh, define the term free fall. Well, I'm going to let you do that. And then what is the velocity and direction of the ball at the moment when it is released from the balloon? Okay. Um, another thing that you have talked about inside the course, right? We have said that the velocity, the initial velocity of a ball in a balloon is equal to the velocity at which it is projected plus the velocity of the hot air balloon. So what is the velocity at which it is projected? Um, the ball is released, right? So the velocity at which it is projected is zero. What is the velocity of the hot air balloon? 5 meters per second. We're taking up is positive. So we're going to have 5 meters per second. So that is the initial velocity of the ball after it is uh, released from the balloon. Okay. And then 4.3. Calculate the maximum height above the ground reached by the ball. Okay. Seems quite straightforward. So it has an, an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. So it will go up first, right? Reach, reach a maximum height, and then it's going to start going down. So we want to calculate the maximum height. What do we have? We have the initial velocity. We have the final velocity, which is zero at maximum height. Um, so we're looking for delta y, right? Because uh, calculate the maximum height. Yeah, we're looking for delta y. And then we, we do have the acceleration. So we're going to say vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta y. So vf squared, that is 0 squared, uh, is equal to vi, which is 5 upwards. So that is 5 squared plus 2a is minus 9.8 delta y. So delta y is equal to 25, well, minus 25 divided by minus 19.6 and then this is equals to 1.28 meters All right let's go to 4.4 that is the mistake that most people do the question says calculate the maximum height above the ground in bold right not uh, the displacement from the time in which it is projected no the maximum height above the ground so the maximum height above the ground right maximum height is equal to 60 meters as you can clearly see from the sketch plus 1.28 which is going to give us 61.28 meters right so make sure that you don't miss those kind of things because most people do miss them okay and then 4.4 how far apart will the ball and the balloon be three seconds after the ball is projected? Okay, so the balloon keeps rising at the constant velocity and our ball, obviously, it starts by going up for some time and then it starts going down. So we want to calculate how far apart they are. So let's start with the displacement of the balloon. Um, it has an acceleration of zero, obviously vf we do have it is equals to vi because it's moving at a constant velocity and we're interested in delta y we also have the time which is three seconds so which equation is the easiest i think delta y is equals to vf plus vi over two multiplied by delta t is the easiest equation we can use here so VF is 5, right? Because it keeps moving with its velocity of 5 meters per second. VI is also 5 because it's moving as a co at a constant velocity. Divided by 2, multiplied by 3. So that is 15 meters. Right, so the balloon has went up some 15 meters, right? In 3 seconds. So that is 15 meters. So we need to calculate how... Uh, where the ball is after three seconds so the information we have with regards to the ball we obviously have delta t we have acceleration we have vi um, we are interested in delta y so what do we do here 
uh, it seems like delta y is equals to vi delta t will work plus a half acceleration delta t is good so vi is 5 delta t is 3 plus a half acceleration is minus 9.8 delta t is 3 right what's happening and then we square that and then when i put that in my calculator i actually don't have a calculator like i said uh 5 3 minus 9.8 3 we square that we get minus uh 29.1 meters okay so the displacement of the ball is downwards so 29.1 meters so we need to add these two numbers to find out how far apart they are so how far apart i need to add another page here so let me just insert a blank page and then right so how far apart we're gonna have 15 plus 29.1 meters well let me not put the SI unit as of yet okay and then this is equals to 44.1 meters so there we go 4.4 and then 4.5 uh, we're supposed to sketch a velocity time graph for the motion of the ball right and then we're supposed to just indicate the initial velocity as a vi and not put the actual value okay so let's say it starts somewhere there and then it goes to reach maximum height and then it goes to strike the ground so what are we supposed to indicate well first v in meters per second because if you don't level our your axis i don't know what that thing is is it a graph i don't know what's going on so this is vi the velocity as vf and time as tf when the ball strikes the ground so here we have um tf and then this is vf okay and then what else i was supposed to indicate the time taken by the stone to reach the maximum height um st max okay so the second bullet point says the velocity vf and and the time it hits the ground okay no i'm making a mistake here so tf is supposed to be here that is where tf is supposed to be it's supposed to have tf right that is the velocity or oh, that is the time at which it strikes the ground and then this is vf the velocity at which it strikes the ground so here i'm gonna have v t max the time at which it reaches maximum height so here we have t max okay i think i have all that i need now okay let's see um there's no instruction that restricts us from checking up is positive or down is positive so even if you do it the other way around you should be fine if you like this video you will definitely love my course go ahead and click the link on my bio and you will land on this page you will not only find the past exam questions but introduction videos where i break down complex concepts into small pieces that are easy to digest it is very important in grade 12 to stay ahead of your teacher and this is what this course is for. It's very easy to navigate through the course as videos are arranged into collections. You can clearly see that we have electrostatics, work energy and power, Doppler effect, so on and so on. Do you maybe need help with study tips and creating your own timetable? We can talk about that inside the course and I can help you out. It doesn't even take a minute to join. Can't wait to hear from you.